Hi Dear Lovers, my name is Edward and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have now finished the tea evolution series and started the ongoing series for both Purple Clay and Brewing Trip. I really appreciate your support, a special thanks to all my friends and tea students who have helped me with the script. This episode wouldn't be the same without you. And I just realized I haven't talked about the most basic tea topic yet. What is tea? So in this video, I want to share the tea definition and how I think of tea. Now let's get this started. Tea is a great drink, regardless of the reason whether it's religious, cultural, for its essential delight in both taste and aroma, the refreshment tea brings to our body, or even just for your health, Tea is a great drink. The broad definition of tea is any infusion or decoction of plant material in hot water. When I say the definition is broad, I mean it. It doesn't have to be the leaf from a plant. It can also include any part from a plant such as seeds, roots, peels, and petals. Does it have to be hot? Iced tea is popular in North America. Does it have to be plant-based? Chaga tea is a fungus. Does a potato chip in water count as tea? Well, according to the definition, I guess so. Oh my god, but seriously? Uh, this is the first time and the last time I talked about the broad sense definition of tea. The narrow sense definition of tea only refers to the leaves from a specific plant, which is Camellia sinensis. For us, tea lovers, tea consumers, connoisseurs of tea, or even tea snobs, a product made of dry Camellia sinensis leaves is called tea. There are a few points in the definition here I would like to explain a bit further. Uh, first, dry. Camellia sinensis leaves needs to be dried to settle their properties, which includes uh, the oxidation level, uh, its flavor profiles, uh, and also the health benefits. Even in bottled tea production, where people want to speed up the process in order to increase the profit, leaves have to be dried to a certain point, which stops the further change before being extracted or concentrated. There are multiple steps and many methods to dry the leaves, which may create different tea families, such as green tea or black tea, which you already know about. But they all need the drying process to lock in the tea's characteristics. The second point is leaves. Camellia sinensis is a tree or a bush, but people do not use other parts of the plant as much as the leaves. The tea you have seen may be in a powder, in tea bags, or a condensed chunk like this, but they are all made of leaves. Even when planting new bushes, growing from a leaf cutting is more common than growing from seeds, as this maintains the quality consistency. The third point is the plant, Camellia sinensis. Here, Camellia parts in the name tell us uh, the plant belongs to the Camellia genus, which is fairly common and has hundreds of species or varieties. The first of three letters S-I-N in sinensis means from China. In Chinese, we call this plant Cha Shu, which translates as tea tree. However, Camellia sinensis could be a tree or a bush. Actually, in tea plantations, people often shorten the plant into a bush for easier plucking. So technically, tea tree is not always tree or cha shu is not always shu. We mentioned in the previous video that cha is the very first character that specified Camellia sinensis among all languages. Uh, if you missed that, click here to watch it. If we translate this character's element, the upper radical means grass, the bottom refers to wood, and the middle part is zhen, which means human beings. I understand this character to describe human beings surrounded by grass and wood, 
So cha not only refers to this wonderful tea plant, it also implies a natural lifestyle. For example, a common Chinese saying is cha ru ren sheng, which translates as tea is similar to human's life. I didn't understand this until seven years ago when I firstly visited a tea garden. I clearly remember uh, how integrated the tea mountains were and the cherry blossoms were surrounding the tea plantations. It was so beautiful. Further, I was truly astonished by how tea makers think of producing tea. Now, let me try to explain this. Tea is made by nature, which changes by species location, and ear. It's as unique as we are. For the best tea makers, their names are not recognized by only one batch of the most noble tea winning an award at a tea festival, but by their skills of making tea that nature provides over the long term. They take whatever nature gives and make the best out of it. It's the skill that brings fame to tea making as an intangible cultural heritage in China. In the Chinese tea industry, this skill is called Kan Qing, Zuo Qing, observe tea leaves, make tea. Tea makers observe the harvested tea leaves and decide what they have to do to produce the best tea from them. This applies throughout all steps of producing tea and the finest tea in China could be produced by machine, but the whole process has to be monitored by the tea maker using the skill Kan Qi, Zuo Qi. To me, uh, producing tea is like growing a child. We raise them based on uh, their unique personality, and the ultimate goal is not to make them into a useful person or a machine. We educate them to use their abilities the best and be happy. Each tea is unique. There isn't one optimal taste, body reaction, tea experience, amount of caffeine, tea polyphenols, or anything else. Each person is unique. There isn't best race, gender, accent, nationality, etc. And each child is unique. There isn't a best body style, zodiac symbol, uh, personality, amount of muscle, bank balance, or university degree. I don't know if this is the reason that Asian Chinese people put humanity, ren, as part of the tea character, cha, but I think it's a good idea to produce both humanity and tea as individuals instead of on the production line. To summarize, I talked about tea's definition and how I think of tea in this video. I hope you enjoy watching it and feel free to comment below on how you believe tea is similar to life. In the spirit of tea, cheers to nature.